You are disrupting you school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is a law, 1,500 feet. Mm -hmm. I'll call the police and say, Please I, do. I, I give you the admonishment. I'm a school official. I'm I appreciate admonishing it. you. You're if admonishing you me to telling me to what? What are you admonishing stop me for doing? disrupting school activities. I am standing on a sidewalk. Would you like to call the police? Because I'll wait for you Somebody to do that. This is Susan Bassey. A few years ago, I was in Sacramento, California, in Judge Brown's courtroom. I was watching a taxpayer lawsuit where a group of seniors and veterans had sued the Attorney General and the Commission on Judicial Performance for not referring judges who commit crimes. I also met a group of people who were known as the cop watchers, and they were disrupting the way that we look at law enforcement. They were teaching us about press passes, IDs, and how to get police officers to give us their name and badge numbers. And they were teaching us that police officers don't always follow their oath and they don't always know the law. And when you're dealing with somebody who doesn't know the law, they taught us to ask for a supervisor. You are disrupting you school. Los Gatos High School sits in the center of Silicon Valley. It has an open campus policy, which means at lunchtime, students are free to hang out with their friends, shop at the local restaurants, and they're trusted with their resources, including their money and their time, their phones, and how they want to use that time during lunch. They can even go to the local churches if they want to spend their time there, as long as they return to school on time. And if these students should jaywalk or be late for class, they're probably not going to go to jail. But that is a very different world in other locations where they have closed campuses and the students are told what to do and think during their lunch hours, or if they happen to live in areas where there are private prisons and the judges are paid if they send kids to jail for jaywalking or being late to school. Two ex-judges from northeastern Pennsylvania must pay more than $200 million to the victims of their Kids for Cash scheme. Former Luzerne County judges Mark Severella sent children as young as eight to for-profit prisons in exchange for kickback. Excuse me, excuse me, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? The pants. The pants, I got them at Costco for about 15 Yes, sir, bucks. the shirt, how much? I think it was $2.99 on oh, Amazon. Oh, yes, sir, the, the, uh, the glasses. The glasses I bought is an Amazon package. How much are the shoes? Uh, I, I think it's yes, sir, how much take a photo of me and my friends? What do you guys like? Yeah, what's your body count? Do you know how to be real? What do you guys like? What's up? What do you guys like? Excuse me? Your inappropriate adult behavior. What is that? What what is inappropriate? How did I do that? You're causing a scene. I I'm causing a scene. Yes. You see anybody else doing that? I've I've been here two years, nobody does that. I just had about 40 kids surround me with their phones recording in public. You didn't see that? They wouldn't be here. I think we're going to need someone more qualified protecting this school. Hi. What are you Collectively, as a society, adults and students alike have learned these last few years that some of the rights, freedoms, and privileges that we once thought we were entitled to can be easily taken away by the government. And the government is comprised of public employees and elected officials. This is Evan Lowe and Dave Cortezzi. Dave Cortezzi is from Los Gatos. They drafted a law that says that if a public official or an elected official decides that a speaker at a public meeting has engaged in disfavorable speech, that they can have that speaker removed from a school board meeting or a city meeting or any public meeting, and that person can even be arrested over their speech. This law arises from an incident that occurred in Los Gatos, California, after a speaker said something disfavorable about the mayor's son who attended Los Gatos High. That resulted in the mayor's husband storming down to the city meeting and engaging in what many would consider violent and disruptive behavior. He was not arrested by the several police officers from Los Gatos who witnessed his conduct. Instead, he was subject to a civil harassment order, and eventually Judge Geffon said that there was no problem and that his behavior was not inappropriate. And yet the speaker's behavior resulted in marches and protests all over the city.
Put your fist up, fist up, fist up. Put your fist up, fist up. You're causing a scene. I, I'm causing yeah. a scene. Yes. You see anybody else doing that? I'm, I've been here two years. Nobody we don't have the same kind of transparency in place. In 2011, Sandy Fonzo confronted former Judge Chivarella outside the courtroom after his sentencing. Uh, Fonzo's son, Edward uh, Kenzikoski, was sentenced by Chivarella to a youth jail and then a four-month boot camp. Edward committed suicide in June of 2010. Confronting Chivarella, Sandy Fonzo blamed the judge for her son's death. My kid's not here! He's dead! Because of him! He ruined my f***ing life! I'd like him to go to hell and rot there forever! Ma'am, come on. No, you know what he told everybody in court? They need to be held accountable for their actions! You need to be! Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Do you remember my son? An all-star wrestler? He's gone! He shot himself in the heart! You scumbag! Ellen McGurk is a campus supervisor at Los Gatos High. During the pandemic, when the school was largely shuttered, taxpayers paid him just over $15,000, compared with the assistant principal, Christy Grazzi, who made over $200,000 a year, more than a judge in the county. Los Gatos is not immune from bad judges. As the Kids for Cash scandal was raging in Pennsylvania, Judge William Dancer was taking bribes to rig traffic tickets for the Los Gatos Little League volunteers and for members of the San Jose Sharks. And recently, Judge James Towery, who still sits on the bench, issued an order restraining a woman from complaining about potential abuse involving Los Gatos Little League volunteers and volunteers in the Los Gatos Boy Scouts. There you go, I got it. What's the video for? Awesome. Hey guys, Nathan, what? wait. What did I do? Get to class. So was it me on? disrupting or was it them? You're causing them to be late. Come on, guys. I'm to causing them to be late. On the same day I was out talking to the students during their lunch break about recording in public, there was a teacher in Los Angeles who worked for the school paper who was censored by her principal about what she could say and could not say about the pandemic, masks, and vaccines. And when the government starts using individuals employed in the government to censor our speech, we have a very dangerous threat to our First Amendment and to our most important rights under that amendment, which is to seek redress of our government. Wow, we got lots of security people here in their golf carts. That's Hi. The, that's the whole issue. Is You're late. Come on, style. guys, move. Hey, I got about a half hour of video, guys. If you have a question, I'm happy to answer it. The, the issue, Kevin, is, if you is there anything you can do anything for you? Can we do anything for you? No, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. What is your name? My name's Kevin. Kevin, and, and are you school what? I'm the principal. You're the principal. Nice yeah. to meet you. My name's Susan Bassey. Susan, is there anything, um, anything I can do for you? No, no, I don't need okay. any help. Then we're fine. As long as you're on the sidewalk. I'd like to file a complaint against that school supervisor, though. Okay, then send me an email. No, I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, okay. I was out recording on this sidewalk because I'm d doing a project on open campuses mm -hmm. and the difference in our county. And he decided to come up and get all the students all riled up. And they were all pointing their cameras at me and everything else. None of that happened until he came up and said my behavior was inappropriate in front of all those kids. I was standing on a sidewalk. I wasn't bothering anybody. I have all my video. I never uh, walked onto the school property. I wasn't doing anything illegal until he created it. And then he said that I had walked onto the campus to film something, and I never did. Try this out. This is amazing. What are you filming? I'm Why filming are you disrupting on the a sidewalk. They're just eating. I didn't disrupt this the shoes. This is disruptive. You're causing, look at the, the ruckus you're causing. This is unnecessary disruption. Okay, what is your name? You're disrupting the campus. What is Alan your name? Here, film it. 
I got it. Okay. Thank you. Campus supervisor. Great. You are within 1,500 feet of the school and you're disrupting students. How am I doing that? That is a violation. Oh, okay. How is okay? that? Look at the ruckus you're causing. I caused that? Yes. How did yes, I cause that's it? that's why I came over here. Okay. Because that's you're disrupting the students, okay? Maybe this makes you happy and this makes your day. Sir. You are disrupting you school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is a law, 1,500 feet. Mm -hmm. I'll call the police and say, Please I, do. I, I give you the admonishment. I'm a school official. I'm I appreciate admonishing it. you. You're if admonishing you me to telling me to what? What are you admonishing to me for doing? disrupting school activities. I am standing on a sidewalk. Would you like to call the police? Because I'll wait for you Somebody to do that. French fries? Guys, disperse. I feel disrupted. Disperse. I feel like you want French fries. She feeds off your guys' attention. Oh, good. So you need to leave. Go back. Go back. What did you just say? Guys, go away. I feed off your attention. Go away. Go away. Feed off your attention. French fries? Nothing. What's the purpose of this? Disrupting. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I have a report that you were by the cat. You may have a report, a but my video was on the entire time. I never left the sidewalk and I recorded from public. So if you have a different report, the student lied to you. So maybe you should be looking into false reports false report. before you make one. Because if you make a false report, You're we're going to go all the way to the mat. No, I'm not. This is lunch, sir. It's an open it's campus. Activity. No, it's an open campus. Head out, head out. Her purpose is to disrupt you, don't let her. You're gonna tell those kids that's my purpose? <laughs> Hi guys. Hey, he's in public. Yeah, he's nice. in. Oh wait, so it's okay for him in public well, to no, do I'm something. Using your argument. Oh, okay. Right, go. Wait, so is it go. my argument or is it the law? It's the law. Okay. I Would you, you like my name? Because I'm gonna report Yo, you. What is your name? My name is Susan Bassey. Ellen McGrack is also the football coach for Los Gatos High School, where the team has been deeply embroiled in some controversy. There have been flyers being distributed all around campus, First Amendment protected activity that has also raised some eyebrows. The First Amendment protects recording in public, leafleting, and seeking redress of your government, no matter how you do it. And this is an important right and a freedom that we all have. And while we are accountable for how we do it, it's a right worth fighting for to make sure that it's done right. So after calling for a supervisor, let's make sure we work on how to file those complaints to make sure that they're heard. Or did. So if you have a supervisor who is making false reports like that in a security situation, you might think about what hap would happen if this wasn't a camera. Because what I just saw was horrifying, and I intend to report him and you for how you're conducting security on this campus. Because if there's that kind of reaction to a 58-year-old woman recording in public, just simply trying to get some B-reel of a school campus that has an open policy, and that's how you react to that, then I'm concerned what's going to happen when a kid has a mental health breakdown and comes to the school with something more than a camera. So you better start thinking about how you're handling this, how you have supervisors like that saying that I'm acting inappropriately for recording in public. Because if that's what you think is acting inappropriately, you're failing in managing these kids. And your little Cassie nonprofit that is connected to the Los Gatos mayor and everything else probably needs to have some revisions in the policies and the training that you're giving to staff. Do you have any other questions? No, Make sure my complaint is lodged. Sure. That's it. I don't have anything else. Make sure you train your staff on what's appropriate and what's not appropriate behavior. The right to record in public is a fundamental right, but just like everything else, it is under a constant threat. And so it's important that we all continue to fight for that right, whether we agree with the speech or not, because the right to record in public is fundamental and important to all of us. We really question other authority figures and people that we're supposed to look up to and trust. I mean, Chivarel has been a judge <clears throat> for a long time from what I know, and a well-respected one is what I thought, and I obviously not. It just really makes me question and not trust other people. I mean, if someone like Judge Chivarella can do this, then it makes me believe that anyone can betray the law, and I don't know. 
Well, now the private juvenile detention companies at the heart of the Kids for Cash scandal in Pennsylvania have settled a civil lawsuit for two and a half million dollars. The state's also passed much needed reforms aimed at improving its juvenile justice system and ensuring the public right to know also includes public records because the public has a right to know how much those golf carts cost that the principal purchased in order to appear more organized and a purchase that was made over the cost of installing cameras on that campus that would have told everybody what was going on that day. You are disrupting you school.